All right. Good morning. Share my screen. Ashley, let me not do that yet. So, <clears throat> somebody was supposed to, well, not somebody, but I asked y'all to finish this problem and <clears throat> to present it today. So, who's going to be the teacher for the moment to walk us through this problem. And it's the same as the other two problems that we work. You have to get everything in moles first and then come back and get everything in grams, uh, trying to get that theoretical yield. Two point six three moles of CO. <clears throat> so knowing that, that's that's my limiting reagent. So we ought to be able now to look at the equation. Which is CO plus two H two goes to CH3OH <clears throat> and it's balanced. So the coefficient here and here, both of those coefficients are one. So what's the relationship, <coughs> excuse me, between CO and methanol on the other side, the product? So this is the reactant side. I always remember reactants on the left, products on the right. This is the reactants. Isn't it a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio? One-to-one -one ratio. Anytime you have that, I'll abbreviate the products. Anytime you have a one-to-one -one ratio, the moles that you calculate for the limited reactant is going to be equipped, they're going to be equivalent to the moles of product. So we, but we're still going to set it up. So we want this in the top. One mole CH 3OH over one mole CO times. 2.63 moles of CO. So moles of CO will cancel. Obviously, that's 2.63. But that's not it. That's not the end of the problem because it asks us for the percent yield. But in order to get the percent, we need the theoretical in grams. So this is the theoretical yield in moles. Well, we need it in grams. How are we going to get that? Uh, do the most of grams equation. We're going to convert moles of methanol to grams of methanol. And you're right. We're going to take the um, Grams equals moles times molar mass. I'm going to put <clears throat> 2.63 moles times the molar mass of. That. 
of uh, methanol, which is 32. All right, this is CH3 of H, which is that's 15, that's 17. All right, somebody calculate that real quick. Moles are going to cancel, left with grams. <clears throat> I got 84.26 grams. How much did it say we we made? 75 grams. Okay, great. So the actual, so now for the percent. So this is my theoretical yield. So the percent yield is actual over radical times 100. So that is the actual was 75. All right, what you got? 89%. 89%, good, excellent. So for this reaction, <clears throat> starting with 100 grams of uh, carbon monoxide <laughs> and reacting it with hydrogen gas, it made 75 grams of methanol. And the theoretical yield, what we say is, uh, what we should get under ideal conditions was 84.26 grams, right? So then we just take that number as, my, as the theoretical yield, which we calculated based on the limiting reactant, and the actual was 75. And with, with a reaction like this, you can understand why you only get 70. I mean, it's not, that's a great yield, by the way. But you think about carbon monoxide is a gas, so is uh, hydrogen. So if you think about just practically running this reaction in a, let's say we're running it in a round bottom flask. All right, so let's say we have a, uh, a round bottom flask. Right, and we're piping this in. So this, this flask is sealed up and we have like a needle coming into it or some type of a gas line with pumping in both gases, right? So CO from one side, H2 from the other side. You could imagine even if this is, if this seal is not tight and you're working with gases, if your lines are have a small leak in it or anything, you're gonna lose some of that gas that's coming in. So you might start with hundred grams, but you may have only added 98 or 99 or 96 grams, right? Cause you're gonna, when you're working with gases, it's easy to lose that, uh, lose a little bit of gas here or there. And that's what we talked about yesterday about how um, you don't always get 100% yield. And most of the time it's because of some something physical that happens. Maybe you dropped something, maybe you broke something, maybe you didn't weigh it out properly. Maybe it called for 100 grams and you only weighed out 99.87 grams. I mean, all of that factors in. So we can, and I'll write that up here. And these are both gases. So 
so many. Right, so we lose any of that star material gas is going to affect that percent yield. Right, so that's how you think about that. You've got 75 grams and you expect the 85 grams. Things happen. All right. Um, I want to now, and thank you. Who was that help, helping with that? Was that you, Alexis? Yes. All right. And I see Jada and Maya put some stuff in the chat. Good. All right. Great. <clears throat> Thank you for your input and for your participation. Let me uh, switch screens real quick. So I want to talk about uh, book will have a simulation for titration, but they, but they don't. Let's see, I don't want to do that when I looked at it last night and it sucked. Uh, where's that simulator? I had one of these. Um, this might work. I was looking through some some stuff last night while I was prepping, trying to find a good. I <clears throat> think we should explore a few solutions. A good illustration for titration, but I, I didn't find anything great. Grammarly suggestions. Can so basically, before I start that, basically what we when we're doing a, <laughs> a titration, it's a type of analysis, and what you normally do. And a titration is make sure it's still recording. Now I'm gonna give you some notes on this too. Uh, no longer, I was not sharing either. It's still recording. All right. So what you normally do in a titration is you have a, what's called a titrant, and that's going to be here in this burette, right? And normally. For GCHEM, we normally just do acid-based titrations, but there are a bunch of different types of titration. But here you have uh, the titrant, and down here you have an analyte. And the analyte is what you're trying to find out. So the titrant, you know, and what we're doing with this is taking advantage of uh, several different things that we already know, right? We know molarity is moles per liter. Uh, we know... <clears throat> Uh, how to get moles from liters, uh, moles from molarity. <laughs> if we have the volume, uh, we know how to balance equations. Like we, we know all of these things. So when you're doing a titration, what you're doing is taking advantage of uh, information that you already know, right? So stoichiometry and you need, a, you need a balanced equation in order to get the proper stoichiometry. You need uh, to know how to manipulate the relationship between uh, molarity and volume, which we've already done. And so with the setup for a titration, it's, it's generally a burette that contains your titrant and it's, that's known concentration. You know that concentration, all right? And then in the flask, it can be an Erlenmeyer flask or a beaker, that's, that's what you call your analyte. And it is what you are, you, so you want to determine the concentration of the analyte. And it's a, it's a fixed volume. Right? It's, it, there, it has to be a specific volume so you can determine the concentration. Um, and so at some point during the titration, you're going to add the titrant to the analyte. And in the titration uh, receptacle, there's also going to be an indicator. So it has to be an indicator something that lets you know that the reaction has reached what's called the uh, equivalence point. And once you do that, the volume that you've added of your titrant is what we call the uh, end point. So let's, let me see what this is. So here, the way you run this is you add, 
And you can see that in the in the uh, flashes, HCl, that's what they're pointing out. So the little blue dots, the hydrogen ions, protons, and then the green dots are chlorine uh, ions. And so with the titrant, you just add in drops of the titrant, right? So that's after five mils, and then you add another five mils, right? And, and you keep adding that very slowly until the indicator causes a color change. And when you get to that color change, that's how you know when the reaction has reached what is called the equivalence point, right? That's when it ends. And, and once you get to the color change, then you know, then you can calculate some stuff. You can calculate the moles of the titrant added, which in turn, if you have, and that's, so here's the equivalence point right here, right? So at, at the, we started out with 60 mils, and after the addition of 30 mils, that's when we reach the equivalence point. Notice the pH is neutral now, it's no longer acidic, right? So that's when we reach that equivalence point. And so now we know how much of this we added. We added 30 mils of a two molar NaOH solution. And based on that, plus based on the balanced equation, we can convert mole, um, uh, volume into moles and then moles of the titrant into moles of the analyte, right? And so let's do that. Let's take, uh, <clears throat> Let me switch screens right quick so we can discuss that. And I'll send you this link too. This is actually really good. I like it. Didn't see this last night, but I'll send that to you. So let me switch screens again. Come on. Right, so, so when we talk about titration, it's an analytical technique. There are lots of different types. You can do redox titration. You can do acid-based titration. <laughs> there are multiple types of uh, titrations that, that you can do. But the overall uh, process is what, it's a process of what we call volumetric analysis. Right, so you have two liquids that you're working with. All right. So again, the ti a ti a titration involves what we call a titrant and an analyte. Hold up. Let me do this. I'm gonna find a illustration. Let me see. That way I can just, I don't have to try to draw it. Let's see, yeah, here we go. Hold on. Give me one second. Bring that right on into our, uh, if I have, been thinking I would have taken it straight from my lab book because we do have a titration section in our lab book. That's all right. We're going to make it work. Appearance. 
All right, so we have a, this is the basic setup for a titration. So you have a burette, right? The burette contains what we call your titrant. So your titrant is a standard solution of known concentration. You got to know the concentration of that. Otherwise, you can't you can't calculate the number of moles or anything and, and use that equation to convert from moles of the analyte to moles of the titrant and vice versa. So that's your that's your titrant. Uh, the burette has a stopcock at the bottom. You turn it vertically to open it. There's a little hole right here. Pencil ain't working. There's a little hole right here where the liquid can come through. <clears throat> and then the analyte, which is in the uh, Erlenmeyer flash. This is an Erlenmeyer flash, by the way. I don't know. Hopefully, we, I can't remember if we talked about glassware in lab or not, but. So Erlenmeyer flask here. And then with the analyte, <laughs> this is what we're trying to analyze. We want to determine this concentration. We're going to put M molarity. of an analyte, All right? So that's that's the purpose of doing a titration. You have a, a solution of known concentration, that's your titrant, and then you add it to your analyte. And at, at some point uh, during the addition, you're gonna reach what's called the uh, equivalence point, right? And so within the analyte, you also have an indicator. So normally, uh, if it's just a simple acid-base titration, you use an indicator like phenylthalene or something like that, and it'll just turn the analyte to like a pale pink. So at one point, at some point during that reaction, that analyte, the indicator will change colors, right? When you reach the equivalence point. <laughs> so you have to have an indicator in, in order to determine when the reaction ends. or tells us the equivalence point, which signals the end of the reaction. That means that the moles of, in the acid-base titration, moles of acid and the moles of base are, should be the same. All right. Depending on what type of titration, most of them are still use an indicator, but depending on what type it is, it's not always acid base. It may be a redox titration or something, some other type of titration. Um, but when the color changes, that's when you know to stop adding titrant. That's when you know the reaction is over and you just add a little bit at a time until you see that color change. <laughs> and once you do that, the volume that you've added of the titrant is what we call the endpoint. That's the volume of the titrant. Basically to cause that equivalence point to, to happen, right? 
So when you're reading a burette, I know many of you already have probably already done this, like these little graduations, these little lines are, are uh, I'm assuming if for this burette, we don't know it could be milliliters. Most of the time it's in milliliters, right? So every, so when you read this, if there's liquid in here and it's and it's a um, it's a clear liquid, the way you read this is that's gonna be kind of a little curvature to where the lot where the liquid stops, and that's called a meniscus. You always read from the bottom of it. So if you have a, if you're doing a, a titration, and let's say uh, this is um, 50 mils, right? You want to read it from here. So it's actually a little, it won't be exactly 50 mils. It might be 48 point something or 49 point something because you want to read it from the bottom of that meniscus. I should always read that uh, burette. Let me fix that. It's sloppy. So you always read it from the bottom of the meniscus. All right. So that's just the, the practical part of, of titration. Right? You got an analyte, you got a titrant, you put the titrant in a burette and you add it until, and you add an indicator to the analyte and you keep adding until there's a color change. Once you get to the color change, you record the volume of titrant that you added and you can you can find the molarity from that so let, let's let's do a, a question so let's, let, there's a question here we have uh, we have hcl very basic plus naoh goes to nacl plus water all right and for this question, the endpoint is um, 35.23. Right, so what that means is that it took 35.23 <clears throat> milliliters of NaOH to cause the, the reaction to reach its equivalence point. All right, and then the concentration of NaOH 0.25 molar. And my analyte volume is 50 milliliters. So this is NaOH. And then my analyte volume, we need that. All right, so this is my titrant. And this is my analyte. All right. So now we want to determine the analyte concentration. All right, so we can do that. We can do that based on, first of all, everything here is in milliliters. So we don't want that. That's usually the first thing that I um, kind of do is turn, convert all my volumes into liters because you know when you're working with molarity is moles per liter.
moles per liter. So anytime you're working with molarity, it's moles per liter. So all your volumes need to be in liters. So let's do that. So let's convert all of our volumes into liters. So 35.23 milliliters is right. You want what you're trying to get rid of in the bottom, what you want to keep in the top. So it ends up being 0 0.035223 liters. And then that's for NaOH. For HCl, it's 50 milliliters, same thing. 50 milliliters times one liter over 1,000 milliliters, that's cancels, and then you get 0 0.050 liters. So now we're good with that. Now, it, it told us that we had, that this titration took 35.23, milliliters of NaOH, that was the end point, right? So now what we need to do is, because we have a bunch of different stuff we can work with. We have the volume of HCl, we have the volume of NaOH, we have the molarity of NaOH, and we have a balanced equation. So we want to convert uh, NaOH into moles. We have the volume, we have the molarity, which was given to us up here. So we want to convert it into moles. How do you do that? How do you take a molarity and a volume and turn it, convert it into moles? So we're going to convert that into moles with the with the molarity. So molarity is of NaOH is 0 0.250. Top number or the top unit is moles per liter. If I want to get rid of liters and find moles, right? So remember molarity times volume is moles. Right, that's, that's how we manipulate that. So we're gonna take that 0.25 times the volume of NaOH, which was 0 0.03523 liters. So liters are gonna cancel and I'm left with a number. Anybody got it? I got zero, zero, eight, eight, zero, seven, five. All right, great. That's moles, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Of NaOH. That's very important. So now we, that we have that, we got moles of NaOH and we got a, <laughs> a balanced equation. We can use the, the stoichiometric ratio from the equation to figure out how many moles of HCl reacted, right? So we're gonna use the balanced equation to find our stoichiometric ratio. Right, and just to recap the equation is, is NaOH plus HCl goes to NaCl plus water. So what's the relationship between NaOH and HCl in this uh, 
equation. All right, if there's no number out here, the coefficient is assumed to be what? Balanced. It's balanced. The co coefficient is assumed to be one. Right. So we're going to say if we're looking for HCl, right, we're looking for this and we have this, we're going to put this in the bottom. So one mole of HCl over one mole NaOH times the moles of NaOH that we found up here, which is 0 0.008. Zero seven five, and that's moles of NaOH. All right, so that's going to cancel with that. So it's the same amount, right? Right, so, so now we know we, we use that balanced equation to convert from moles of NaOH to moles of HCl. Now, what we can do with that is find the molarity of HCl. So find the concentration of HCl. Remember concentration is moles over liter, right? So we know the moles. We just determine that to be 0 0.008075, is that right? Did I miss a number? No. It's um, 0 0.0088075. Yeah, let's, let me fix that. All right. All right, so we know the moles and the volume it gave us at the very beginning. It said that the sample of HCl was 50 milliliters. So that's divided by 50. Uh, and we already had converted it into liters. So all the information we had, we just applied it. All right, so what's the, what's the uh, concentration of HCl and for this example? I got point um, 0.17615. And we'll just put a big M out here. So that's the concentration of ACL. So anytime you're doing a titration, depending on what's given, you're gonna use what's given to find what you need, right? And you always are gonna base that titration because that's the chemical reaction happening. So if you know the equation for the reaction and you balance it, it's the same concept that we've been doing with, with uh, the stoichiometric ratios. We can convert any of the substances into any of the other ones stoichiometrically using that ratio, as long as the equation is balanced. All right, any questions about that? All right, so all is all everything with titration is you have to, there's some things you have to know. You have to know the uh, concentration of your titrant. You have to know how much of it you added. 
uh, and you have to know how much analyte you have uh, in the flask. If you know those three things and the balanced equation, you're good. Because once you figure out how much titrant it took to get to the equivalence point, that volume and the concentration of your titrant will give you the moles of titrant. And then you can take those moles of titrant and convert them into moles of analyte using the stoichiometric ratio uh, from the equation. And the equation has to be balanced. If it's not balanced, you're up the creek. Um, actually, I have another example, but I'm not going to do it. We're, gonna, we're just going to stop here because I think this is enough of titration to give you a feel for like how to solve a problem like this. All right, any questions from anybody? All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stop here, and we'll pick this up. We'll pick back up on Friday. That's okay, Maya. I see your stuff though. Thank you. Uh, we pick back up on we'll pick back up on Friday. We're gonna start chapter five, which is uh, thermochemistry. If you have the the free OpenStax book, uh, go ahead and start reading the thumbing through chapter five. Uh, if you have the Chang book, you can look up. Thermo, look up uh, thermochemistry. I'm not sure what chapter it is in that book. If you have the internet, you, you know, if you don't have a book, you can't afford a book, even though the ebook is free, you can Google thermochemistry, Google enthalpy. Uh, uh, that's what we're going to start studying on Friday. And that's the next topic, enthalpy. All right. So even if you don't have a book, you can still Google the topic and get a million hits. All right, so I'll see you guys on Friday.